This episode is sponsored by NordVPN. Later in the video, we'll show you how you can save 75% on your very own subscription and get an extra month for free. At the beginning of the month, I took a few weeks off for a vacation, but while gone, I challenged the rest of the team to continue our musical instrument series by building a set of flutes so they could perform a song for me when I return. For some guidance, they connected with musician Peter John. Hi, my name is Peter. I make music under the name Spearfisher. You can subscribe to me. You can also check out my other channel, Duo Futur. I've been playing piano since I was four. I have a doctorate in piano performance and composition. As a pianist and a musician, I'm always looking for new and interesting sounds. My favorite sounds are things that you can only find if you make them yourself. To take something that is totally unexpected, turn it into a synthesizer, and then replay it. So I've done this with choirs. I've done it with classroom kids. I've made flutes. I've made tank drums. I've learned how to play musical saw a little bit. I'm just really interested in finding unique sounds and making worlds inside of sound. One of my favorite things is to hear something that's never been heard before. And I'm gonna help how to make everything, make some instruments. Okay, so this is a double reeded instrument called a duduk. And so one way of getting sound out of something is you have two reeds that go together and then you vibrate the two reeds. Whatever you do, you'll have to at least uh, deal with putting holes in something. The, the way the holes work is that you're actually lengthening and shortening a column of air. When I'm blowing in the end of this, if I'm blowing here, and I'm covering all the holes, the air travels all the way down the flute and goes all the way out the bottom. So you're, you're playing the entire length of the tube, so you get the lowest note. Whereas as you release fingers, you start letting the air come out of the next hole down, so then the note gets higher. This is called a kenna. It's the relative of the shakuhachi. This angle has to be properly cut. It has to be right at this 45 degree angle. But if you get that part right, you're able to tune a scale by then um, changing the different holes here. A wider hole will bring your instrument up in pitch, and the smaller holes will bring it down in pitch, but it's really hard to make a wider hole smaller. You could use something like a single reeded instrument. This I made out of a little bit of plumbing pipe. That's just because I suck at <laughs> playing it. Another approach for getting a sound is instead to use your, your lips like two reeds. So that would be more like how a trumpet would make a sound. Mm -hmm. So this is a conch shell, and someone just cut the end off of it, and it makes like a war horn kind of sound. <laughs> Lovely. You could make something like this, another single reeded instrument, but this has actually two pipes on it, so it makes mm -hmm. two sounds at the same time. This is called a midwiz, another Middle Eastern instrument. So it's uh, one of my favorites. Uh, it's a noble instrument. You could make something like an ocarina. So, or also Native American flutes use the same uh, system. Mm -hmm where this angle is already cut and you actually are blowing further down on the flute and then you know you put your mouth on the end of it so you don't have to worry about splitting your air in real time which is tricky you know because you yeah. let's make some instruments oh. hey i'm annalise and i'm here at the como zoom conservatory to talk to zookeeper jill about bison so I looked up what a Gemschorn was. It's actually like a German cattle horn flute. So I'm gonna try to make that. I just need to find a way to get a hold of a cow horn. What's kind of the structure of a bison horn? Because they're different from antlers. A little bit, yep. So horns are for keeps. So the biggest difference is horns grow from the inside. They have a core that's about four or five inches long and that's where the blood supply is and that's what's supplying the horn growth. And the rest of the horn is just keratin. So it's just like our fingernails, just okay. super hard keratin. The outer is kind of like a sheath. So that core sits in there and that core is not gonna go anywhere, but the sheath could break off at some point. If they were to lose a horn, it's gonna be because of a trauma. They could stick it in the mud and it'll pop off. Fighting with another male, you'll see a lot of horn breaks. The horn in your hand, how'd you come by it? She was trying to show off to put him in his place. I'm gonna horn the ground so it was a display of dominance, except she got it stuck in the mud and she popped her horn. So is she still the top dog? No, no, no. she has since lost Aww. that position. <laughs> Neat. I decided to make an ocarina out of clay and I sourced it from the banks of Minnehaha Falls here in Minnesota. Like Looks like clay. Hopefully that's enough to make our ocarina. Let me dig a little deeper. Yeah, yeah baby. Yeah, there she is. Ooh, that's that's all clay. Is it? Yeah, this is clay. Feel that. We found the jackpot. Look at the hole down there. Load, load. Load, load. That's how we do it. 
do it, I need to see you. Oh, I'm so pleased. Look at all that clay! Now that I've harvested the clay from the riverbed, all that's left now is to mix it up, have the heavier sediments and the rocks that we don't need go to the bottom, and the clay sediments we need to go towards the top. We'll then pour it over into this bucket, and hopefully we'll leave all the rubble and some of the organics behind and have the clay we need for the ocarina. It just looks like dirty water. It is dirty water. I know, but like, I'm making an absolute disaster. I just got my nails done too. I gotta work on my arms more. Okay, my mind is strong, my arms are not. Give it to me. This is like the clay I'm talking about, you see it? That looks like a bunch of clay stuff. It went in my eye. So I sifted out most of the clay, I think. What's left now is this weird sort of sticky clay stuff. Still a little too watery. What's left is to wait for the water to rise to the top and the clay to settle to the bottom and then work with that, dry it out a little bit, and we should have some workable clay. So I'm gonna pour what's in the, the bowls into this, which is two layers of towels to sort of drain out all that excess moisture and make the clay something a little bit more workable. I'm just gonna unclip this and pray it doesn't fall through and that I have the agility. <gasps> I don't have the agility. After letting it hang to dry, we've got some real clay. I can hold it up and mold it into what I want. So if I want a nice little circle, I got a nice little circle. Today I'm going to try making a cana. Cana? Cana? It's a South American flute. I'm gonna be making it today out of bamboo. Andy sourced this bamboo from a California bamboo forest, went and chopped a bunch down, and it's pretty much perfect for my needs. It's already hollow, it's lightweight, and hopefully it'll be easy to work with. Safety first. So the trick to making this cana is going to be starting out with more wood than I actually need and then cutting it down to get the right tone. And luckily Andy brought back a ton of bamboo, so if I screw up too badly, I can start over. I didn't realize this about bamboo, unfortunately. This little break in the middle here blocks it off completely. Crap. Now that we're back at the studio, I'm gonna use a sander and some files to try to sand down this husk and polish it a bit, so I'm a little less afraid of putting my mouth on it, because right now it still has hair on it. Now that I have the horn all smoothed out, I have to make an end cap for it so that I can block the airflow except for one little bit. So to do that, I'm gonna take this scrap piece of wood I found and I'm going to trace the horn onto it to get the shape I need. I'll take this piece over to the chop saw to get the rough shape. My ears hurt. I'll refine it with the Dremel and I can finish off the shape so it fits perfectly with the sander. So I'm gonna to attempt to make the mouthpiece portion of this before I start in on the holes um, so that I can at least make sure I'm making like a whistling sound through here because I think that is vital. And then I can start in on the holes and tune them accordingly by making them smaller or bigger. Still not quite sure on the placement, but we'll figure that out. I'll cut that little black shape out and it should line up with the 45 hole cut in on the horn and make a whistle sound. So it's a little cutting on that. Put the cap in here. Can you see it? I'm just trying to make the 45 degree slope now. We're gonna give that a try. See if it makes any noise at all. It does not. <laughs> it just blows horn dust at my face. Ah! I'm figuring this out. I'm doing my best. Now that I've dried out the slurry, what we're left with is actual clay. And now we're gonna make this into an ocarina. Hopefully I can figure this out. And if I can't, I tried. <laughs> this is the first time I've made clay, and this is the second time I've worked with clay in my entire adult life. And Andy's out of town. I'm unsupervised, and this is gonna be funny. So now that I'm like kinda done with the ocarina, even though it's not working, I'm tired of putting my mouth on dirty river water. But hopefully it will work once we dry it using these silica drying beads. So right now they're like a dark bluish color. As they absorb moisture, they will turn a lighter color. After setting a lot of beads in here and then the clay ocarina, hopefully it'll absorb all the moisture from it. Hopefully, once it's dry and I carve it a little bit, it'll work. And if it's not, well, it'll work. <laughs> Please dry my child. I'm gonna try something a little unconventional because to drill through it, we would need a drill bit that was like a foot long and we don't have one. So I'm going to make one out of this leftover brass. Don't do this at home, kids. <gasps> oh God. <laughs> Kinda looks like a drill bit. 
Right, hopefully that'll work. This might be a very bad idea. Hey, haha, I see light at the end of the tunnel. Now getting the middle part out, like once I've punched a bunch of holes in it, that's, I guess we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. So it's kind of working. Now I'm going to put some sandpaper on the end of this thing so I can sand out what's left in there. <laughs> ah, a weird solution is still a solution. Let's do this like Brutus. Hey, it's working. Hot glue guns are one of my favorite tools because they're fun, they're easy to use. You can't get too hurt while using them. <laughs> Good torture device. Yeah, open your mouth. All right. <laughs> you got some sawdust or something. So I don't have a sound out of it yet with the mouth hole that I've made, but I'm gonna try to put in a finger hole and just see what happens. So yeah, here we go. So I'm getting this tone, which is pretty solid. Um, so I'm gonna continue making finger holes and see what other notes we can get out of it. At least differentiating tones, I don't know if I'm ever gonna hit an actual note. It's a little bit of a change. This top hole is what actually makes the air vibrate. It ended up needing to be a lot bigger than I thought. I also had to make the mouth hole bigger just to get more air going through it. And then I figured out I was blowing way too hard into it also. So this is what I've got. I've got these two note holes. I'm gonna take it to Peter and see if he recommends anything to try to make it go farther or work better. It's been about a day or so and it looks like it's dry because the silica bead are definitely a different color. Because I love myself, I'm not going to put this on my mouth ever again. And I think I'm going to use rubber gloves, just cut out a finger and put it over the mouthpiece because I don't want to get sick and die. But we're gonna figure out if this works or not. All right, so delicate surgery here. And then we, we snip snap the moment of truth. You should play epic music over this, Joey. While everyone else was busy making flutes, I got to spend some much needed vacation time traveling a little in Europe. One of the pains of traveling is running into location lock services. And for that, I was thankful we had access to NordVPN. I left midway through Game of Thrones and my subscription to HBO wouldn't work outside the US. But with NordVPN, I could quickly regain access so I could stay up to date and be disappointed with everyone else. Thanks to NordVPN, I get connections whether on my laptop or my phone. It's really fast, it's got military grade encryption, unlimited bandwidth, and thousands of servers in over 61 countries. It's the only VPN to get a perfect score from PCMag. For a limited time, get 75% off a three year plan at nordvpn.com slash HTME. This special offer makes your subscription just $2.99 per month, so you can browse securely on all devices. And for a short time, use code HTME to get an extra month of NordVPN for free. Click the link below to get there. The moment of truth. Just, 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 just. It works, it works, huh? It works. So it works, I can't say that. That's, that's illegal. Does the holes work? It works, and I'm not fired yet, and that's great. We are done, and we can now cut to someone else struggling with their instrument because I'm tired. I've got my tube and I can actually see through it now. Where are you? There you are. Hello. I'm about to start carving into it to make the whistly noises and then make the soundy holes. Well, it's getting there. This is hard. <laughs> That's nice. I'm impressed that I made that. So it works, it resonates, but it's out of tune. So I'm gonna try and get it tuned to a G. And to do that, we're just gonna have to cut it down until it's at the right pitch. So this might take some finagling. Nice. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, it had a, gotta remember to breathe, Joey. Close to a G, it's a little sharp, but I can deal with that pretty good for my first try of making an instrument. So I'm just gonna drill, drill the note holes, finger holes. Make it a little larger. Pretty good. 
good. G, A, B, sharpish, and almost C. Let's try for D. Making flutes is a lot harder than I expected. Also, I'm worried about making the holes too big. <laughs> Sounds kind of eerie. So it works. It's not perfect, but it works. I'd call it a success. And I'm gonna go sit down because I'm starting to get lightheaded from hyperventilating. So this is my pile of dirt. Great, I see, and you, you've made it safe for me to use. So it's always important to practice safe ocarina playing. It tastes great. It's got a really nice flavor. A lot of ocarinas usually use simple pentatonic scales, which is like a five note scale, but this one's using more of like uh, every single half step. You'd want to widen these holes a little bit so oh, the pitch okay. would come up a little bit. thought that was possible. Good job, this is really great. It actually works. That's kind of the amazing thing, so. Thanks. So this is my Gimshorn. Looks like you have a good angle there also. <laughs> so yeah, it has that kind of breathy sound, mm -hmm. right? One thing would be, of course, to add more holes, but mm -hmm. the other thing is if you make these holes bigger, or widen them, then the pitch will go up. Yeah, on this one, you can play Jaws, but you can't play Hot Cross Buns. How did I do? Wow, I mean, it looks great. The finger holes are a little bit big on this one, so if I had bigger fingers, it might be easier for me to play. Sounds like you actually did a good job tuning the scale, so you can actually hear that major scale coming through. So let me see if I can get a little twinkle um, action happening for us, but we'll, we'll see. Very nice, the haunting sound of the Kenna. And now, to put it all together for the final recital. Thanks again to NordVPN for their support. Click on the link below to get your special HDMI discount. And for a limited time, use code HDMI to get an extra month for free. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.